We have been traveling the rich lands of East Africa, far and wide, across the highlands and lowlands of this beautiful region, talking to farmers wherever we go. Shamba Shepard Safari. Hello, I'm Judy Payne from USAID. I'm the ICT advisor for agriculture in our Bureau of Food Security. Today I have with me Anne Marie Stein from the Medii Group. Uh, you may know about Shamba Shape Up, you may have heard about it. Well, Anne Marie's here to tell us more about it and give us some updates. So, my first question to Anne Marie is well, first, welcome. And can you explain to our viewers what Shamba Shape Up is? They probably heard about it, but it's hard to imagine what it is. Mm -hmm. And how many farmers are actually watching it? Okay. Well, Shamba Shape Up is, um, is a makeover style reality TV show. Um, and we film it in Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. Broadcast it in those three countries. And basically the format is the two presenters arrive on the farm. Hello and welcome to Shamba Shep Up. We are in Tiva, in Kitui County. And we are here to meet a hardworking farmer who is a shepherd. Well, let's go meet her. And they speak to the family and they ask them what their problems are. Hello. Hello. Hello, Lydia. Hello. Hello. Yeah, show us the farm. Um, what they need help with. Today we are visiting Lydia, a hard-working farmer who keeps cows, goats, and donkeys. And the farmer might say, "Well, my cow only gives me one liter of milk a day." Um, and then we get our partner experts in, who might be an animal health um, expert, for example. And we go and have a look at the cow and explain what is the problem you know, show what the symptoms are and then how to treat it and then demonstrate the treatment um, and then move on to the next crop or, or animal. Um, so each show covers one farm and usually between four or five topics. Um, it's filmed in English and Swahili and we also have um, a backup system or an SMS so people can send us a text message and ask for more information. Um, they can follow up on social media and they can watch it online. And currently in East Africa, we have about between 9 and 10 million people watching the program every week, um, which is great. Yeah, that's impressive. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to scale a lot of ICT-enabled services, so mm -hmm. I love your numbers. Uh, but the numbers for radio are often bigger than that, and mm -hmm. when we think of Africa, we think radio is the place to go and the medium to use. Mm -hmm. Why are you using TV? For two reasons. So in Kenya, we know that the radio, the total radio audience is 21 million people, give or take a few million, um, and the TV audience is about 14 million. Now that's listening or watching every week. So the total audience is, is massive, but in Kenya you have six TV broadcasters and you have 182 registered FM radio stations. So you cannot reach more than a million people on any radio station because the audience is so fragmented. An average Kenyan will listen to between three and seven radio stations every week, but they'll only watch two TV program, TV stations. So the, the fragmentation is there. The other thing is the format of radio is it's good for chat shows. Um, FM is more and more going into the advertising, the music, the, um, the silly social competitions, you know, during rush hour or, or during the weekend, you know, SMS us, you know, is my husband cheating on me or, you know, where can I find a boyfriend? That's really growing in East Africa at the moment. And you can't put our radio program on this longer than seven to ten minutes. So you can't really get a lot of content over. It's good in some places um, where there is no TV, but where there is TV, TV is the best way to go because it's visual. Lots of people can watch it and access it. It's an aspirational item to have in the house. 44% of rural Kenyan households own a TV, and 43% of people who watch TV are doing so outside of their own homes. So that's a huge number of people accessing TV. I've watched some of your programs because mm -hmm. I can see all of them on the web, yeah. uh, and I have good bandwidth so I can actually watch them. Mm -hmm. um, and what I was really impressed with 
uh, was the two leads, the, mm -hmm. the characters of them, and the, that it was truly entertaining. Yeah. Um, even though the star would be a farmer, mm -hmm. um, it was something that I wanted to watch. Yeah. Um, and how do you pull that off? How do you pick those farmers and where did you get these actors? So uh, Tony Juguna is the, is the actor and the actress is a lady called Naomi Kamau who's very famous in Kenya as Mama Mboga, which means Mrs. Vegetable. So she, was, she and Tony have been lead actors in our drama soap opera series, Makutano Junction, which has been on air for seven years and it's one of the most popular TV programs in Kenya. Um, so they're very well known in Kenyan households already and they are, they're great, they're extremely energetic. In terms of the content, they get given the content the day of filming. So they get given you know, a bullet point list of this is what you have to cover and they just pile in there and ask the right questions. Um, and they, they ah. feed off each other. Oof. Ah, I tried biting one of these. Not a good idea. Mm -hmm. Are you getting along? <laughs> Not bad. Well, John had a look at the cow and recommended a better cow shed. Ooh, Lady has learned how to sell her products on the market. Mm -hmm. And now she's drying some of these chilies in the hot sun. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but what really makes them the slap happy sort of comic value is the crew. The crew and the director. So the crew and the director sort of gear them up and, and, and it's quite fun filming because you're always looking around the farm for something that you can make a, a skit out of. You know, whether it's a cat up a tree and then you send Tony up the tree and he gets stuck and then Naomi has to go and get him. Just to try and keep the light-hearted um, atmosphere around the program because we all know that if you're not entertained, you cannot be educated. People who are bored just don't learn. Mm -hmm. So, and also people who are bored don't come back to watch the program. So it's very important to us that people are educated. Yeah. Right. So I work a lot uh, figuring out how to use information technology and extension services. Mm -hmm. And extension is somebody, sometimes private and sometimes public. Yeah. The emphasis in the past, it seems, has been to show people how to do stuff better. Mm -hmm. um, but they've all been shown a lot. Mm -hmm. um, the change, uh, showing people or convincing people to change mm -hmm. is something that people are thinking about a lot more now. Like, why would I even want to try this? Yeah. So I think your, uh, your TV series does that pretty well, that behavior change part, as, as one might call it. Yeah. Um, how do you choose those farmers? I mean, are there, do you go out and find them or do people clamor to be on the show? <laughs> People clamour to be on the show, but we don't do it like that. We get about sort of between, well, several hundred messages every weekend asking us to come and shape up their shambler. Um, but the way we do it is based on the content that we're going to cover in, that, in a particular episode, we know where we have to go. So, for example, example, if we're covering sorghum farming, we have to go to a sorghum farming area, which is marginal areas. And then we'll be working with specific partners. Um, so, for instance, if we're in, uh, if we're in Sorghum, we're working with UCORD and they'll have their extension workers in particular areas. So we'll, we'll call the extension workers and say, we're coming filming um, next month and the characteristics of the farmers we're looking for are, you know, they have to be a female-headed household, they have to have children, they have to have no electricity, they have to have no guttering if we want to cover rainwater harvesting. They have to be growing sorghum and they have to have a cow. So they will go out and run around and visit all the farmers they know and other farmers they don't know and talk to their friends and find a short list of about 10. Then we'll turn up, me, myself and the uh, producer director and an assistant and a driver and we'll drive around and visit all the farmers on the list and then we'll pick one of them. So usually it's someone who's a bit more forthright and uh, we'll, we'll tell them, well, we're going to come back in a week's time. We'll be 14 people, but you don't have to feed us. And we're going to be here for four days, and we're going to bring you people to, to show you how to improve your farm. Mm -hmm. And probably in the States, that would have a, a response of, oh, my God, how exciting. In Kenya, there's, in Tanzania and Uganda, there's barely a ripple. They go, oh, that's nice. <laughs> and then when they see the crew arrive, they go, oh, my gosh. <laughs> but uh, they... At the end of the day, they always enjoy it, um, and we keep in touch with all of them. Uh huh. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. 
So given you're so popular, is it easy to pay for all this? I mean, in the U.S. or in much of the world, advertisers would just clamor to get to all those people. How are you doing um, on getting this all paid for? So Media is a private company, um, and we make media for education. And the way we've managed to stay out of the completely donor-funded box is by um, producing programs that are highly popular and then selling slots within the programs to specific partners who provide the content that we need. So um, we have private companies, you know, the feed companies, Unga Feeds, the animal health companies, um, like Coopers, the vaccine people, Ultravetis, we have Galvmed, um, which is an, an NGO, and then we have the NGO world, the Technoserves, the One Acre Funds, then we have um, donors as well, so USAID now, and uh, also Rockefeller Foundation with their food wastage um, program. So they'll come on board and they'll buy a certain number of slots in the program. And then they appear in the program with their extension workers or their partners. Um, and that's, that's how we fund the program, that's how we, we stay liquid. The broadcaster gets the program for free and then sells the advertising within the program and keeps the money. So we don't have to pay the broadcaster to put the program on air, which is how it works in Kenya. If you want to put something on air, you pay the broadcaster and you sell the advertising. We don't want to get into the advertising world. So we make the program, it's, pro it's, a, it's profitable for us um, in most cases, and then the broadcaster gets to keep all the advertising revenue. So it's a win-win situation.